Welcome to Wednesday Word this morning. Thank you for taking out time out in your busy weekly uh, schedules to tune in. And uh, we pray that our time together will be refreshing and helpful and it will be, be food for, for our souls. And I'm continuing where we left off on Sunday as we consider these words in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 11, where for the only place in all of the Gospels, Jesus bears his heart to us. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We said last time that part of Jesus' nature is divine, uh, but he is also human. We must never forget that he is divine, but for today, we are focusing on the humanity of Christ, the human side of Christ. And we're thinking particularly um, of his heart, the heart of Jesus as reflected in these verses. So, and, and it's a reflection also on a book written by uh, Dane Ortland, a 42-year-old Presbyterian uh, American minister who wrote the book, Jesus, Lowly and Heart, at the start of lockdown, and it became a bestseller. And at one point he says, concerning the heart of Jesus... He says, and concerning the heart in general, he says it is the central animating center of all that we do. It's what gets us out of bed in the morning, what we daydream about as we drift off to sleep. It is our motivation headquarters. The heart in biblical terms is not part of who we are, but the center of who we are. Our heart is what defines and directs us. And that is why Solomon tells us to keep the heart with all vigilance, for it flows for from it flows the springs of life. In other words, the heart drives all that we do. It is who we are. And when Jesus tells us what animates him most deeply, what is most true of him, uh, what we find there is that he is gentle and lonely. And who would have ever thought up such a wonderful savior? Let's just think for a moment about this word gentle. It's used only three times in the New Testament. In the first beatitude, uh, where Jesus spoke about the meek or the gentle will inhabit the earth. It's spoken about in the prophecy in Matthew 21 and verse 5, quoting Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9, that Jesus the King is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey when he rode into Jerusalem for the last time. And so when we think about meek and humble and gentle, we're not thinking about harsh or reactionary or easily exasperated. So Jesus is the most understanding person in the universe and his most natural post posture is not pointing a finger, but it is opening his arms and he is lowly. The word is translated humble in the New Testament. So the point is, in saying that Jesus is lowly, is that he is accessible. Yes, as we said last time, he is resplendent in glory, he is holy, he is unique and other. But no one in human history has ever been more approachable than Jesus Christ. No hoops to jump, jump through here. The only thing you need to do is to simply open yourself to him, and that is what he works with. That's all he needs to work with us. And so verse 28 of Matthew 11 tells us explicitly who qualifies for fellowship with Jesus. All who labor and are heavy laden, your burden is what qualifies you to come. And he says, I will give you rest. And so whether you're working hard at this point in time to try and somehow get your life in some kind of order, or whether you are just finding yourself weighed down by something outside of your control, in other words, you are heavy laden, Jesus' desire for you is to find rest. He wants to bring you out of the storm. Now, one more word to look at here in verse 30. Jesus says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is not saying that life is free of pain or hardship. The Christian life we know is often one of toil and labor. This word easy in verse 30 is the same word translated as kind. In other words, unlike, and here's the illustration he uses in verse 30, unlike the yoke or the heavy crossbar laid upon the donkey to force it to drag farming equipment through the field, which obviously weighed the donkey down or the animal down. Jesus' yoke is not like that. That's the point that he's making. In fact, it's a, it's a non-yoke. 
and its burden is a non-burden. So to quote, to quote Dane Ortland again, what helium does to a balloon, Jesus' yoke does to his followers. We are buoyed along in life by his endless gentleness and supremely accessible lowliness. He doesn't simply meet us at our place of need. He lives in our place of need. He never tires of sweeping us into his tender embrace. It is his very heart. It's what gets him out of bed in the morning. And so our natural inclination is that we don't think of Jesus like that. Our natural inclination in the words of Thomas Goodwin the Puritan is that he looks at us with a severe and sour disposition. But that's not a reality. The Jesus of the Bible is lowly and gentle. Now you may well be thinking to yourself, well how can I be certain that he really is like that? And that's why we need a Bible, because in the Gospel records we see him acting in this way towards us, in this loving and caring and compassionate way towards us again and again, because he cannot act in other way. It is at base, it is who he is, and his life proves his heart. So let me just go to the Gospels as we bring this towards an end and just give you a few of very many examples. So for example, in Mark chapter 2, when a group of men, and Matthew chapter 9, when a group of men bring their paralyzed friend to Jesus, Jesus cannot even wait for them to ask him what they want. When Jesus, We read in Matthew 9 and verse 2, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. Before they could even open their mouths to ask for help, Jesus couldn't stop himself. Words of calm and reassurance come out. And then we see him in the Gospels traveling from town to town. And we read that he saw the crowds and he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. And he teaches them and he heals their uh, diseases and he has pity upon the crowds. And we see this compassion of Jesus coming in wave after wave over and over again in the ministry of Christ as he heals the sick and he feeds the hungry. Twice in the Gospels we are told that Jesus broke down and wept and it in neither case is it sorrow for himself or his own pains, but it is sorrow for other people. In one case, he stands over Jerusalem and weeps over Jerusalem because he knows that trouble is coming upon that city. And in another case, when his very good friend Lazarus had died, we read that Jesus wept. And my dear friends, it's no different today. He hasn't changed one bit. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus is in complete solidarity with us. He's distraught uh, people in our struggles, in our guilt, in our failure to be able to live exactly as we would like to live. Jesus is with us and he is close to us and he deals with us tenderly. And so if you are anxious this morning or today, if you are anxious, if you are depressed, if you are feeling overwhelmed, if you are feeling down, in the words of Thomas Goodwin, the great Puritan writer, Christ is love covered in flesh. And so go to him. He is the medicine that we need for our souls. He is the one that we need to turn to. I know sometimes we believe the words of the Sunday school song, Jesus loves me, this I know. But sometimes we wonder whether objectively I can truly know that Jesus, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know he loves me. But does he like me? Does he like me in my struggle and my sins? And when we see what the whole Bible says about the love of Christ and the love of God, we discover a love and a commitment to us, his people, that soars way beyond anything that our natural human capacities limit us to. Because throughout the Bible, from cover to cover, we see a divine love towards us that is incredible and amazing. And it goes on from this life. It goes through death. And it goes on to the next life and it continues through eternity as well. And this is the Jesus I hold out to you today and say to you, if you are feeling a burden, if you are weary and heavy laden, well, come to him and speak to him and pour out your heart to him. Because it is a heart that is full of love and compassion towards you. And so let's pray together. And Lord Jesus, thank you that we can know that your heart is always turned towards us. Yes, we stumble and fall and we sin and we struggle, Lord, for we are but frail human beings living in a broken and fallen world. But Lord, you love us. Lord, you care for us. Lord, you constantly show compassion and care towards us. 
So help us to come to you and pour out our hearts to you, knowing that in you alone we will find rest for our weary souls. And this we ask in your precious name.